The first ever, ever public mobile phone call. The first ever public call from a mobile phone was actually made a whole 10 years before any mobile phone was commercially available. Martin Cooper, a senior engineer at Motorola, made history when he called a rival telecommunications company and informed them that he was speaking from a mobile phone. The call was actually made with a prototype of their Dyna TAC model, the first handheld mobile phone on the market, which was released a whole 10 years later. Mobira, Nokia, Senator 1982. Widely considered as the first true mobile phone available to consumers, the Mobira Senator, produced by Nokia, was probably more effort to use than it was worth. Weighing an incredible 10 kilograms, there's no chance that you'd be able to carry one of these around all day. This pioneering mobile phone used a network called Nordic Mobile Telephony, NMT, standard, part of the first generation, 1G, of wireless cellular technology. Motorola Dynatac 8000X 1983 Just one year after Mobira's famous Senator model launched, Motorola launched the first ever handheld mobile phone with the Dyna TAC 8000X. The phone in question weighed over a kilogram and took more than 10 hours to charge, a lot of effort for something that only offered 30 minutes of battery when fully charged. This was also the phone that was used to make the first public phone call in the UK in 1985. Nokia 1011-1992 The next 10 years were relatively slow in terms of technological advances, with several similar models to the Dyna TAC 8000X popping up, most notably Nokia with the release of its Cytemon model under the Mobira brand. This all changed in 1992 when Nokia launched its 1011 model, the first mobile phone that could be used anywhere in the world. This was thanks to its ability to access the global system for mobile communication, GSM, network, often referred to as the second generation, 2G. IBM Simon 1994 First launching in 1994, IBM Simon Personal Communicator is widely considered as the world's first smartphone. Way ahead of its time, the IBM Simon featured a touchscreen display and countless pre-installed apps such as an address book, calculator, calendar, digital notepad, world clock, and more. Whilst it was only on the market for six months, IBM still managed to sell 50,000 units of the hammed set. Nokia 9000 Communicator 1996 Remember the Nokia 9000 Communicator? This was the first phone of its kind, marking the start of Nokia's legendary communicator line. It also served as inspiration for RIM, the mobile phone company that made its name amongst business professionals throughout the mid-2000s with the BlackBerry brand. The 9000 communicator featured a full QWERTY keyboard as well as being one of the first phones with the ability to send and receive emails and fax via its GSM modem. This was also an earlier model of the Nokia communicator that Kelly Rowland used to famously text Nelly via an Excel spreadsheet. RIM, BlackBerry, 850-1999 Three years after Nokia launched its communicator line, BlackBerry entered the professional mobile phone market with its first model, the BlackBerry 850, although at this time the brand was called RIM. Whilst it was a very basic version of the Blackberries that a lot of us were familiar with in the late 2000s it still rocked a fairly similar design, featuring a QWERTY keyboard as well as the ability to send and receive emails and browse the internet. Saying that, this mobile phone was more of a two-way pager, it didn't actually have the functionality to make phone. Sharp JSH04-2000 Following the turn of the millennium, mobile technology developments really started to pick up pace. Japanese tech company Sharp released the Sharp JSH04 under the J-Phone brand in November 2000. Whilst the model was only available in Japan, it shaped the face of mobile phones forever, this was the very first Nokia 1100-2003. Mobile technology advancements really started to pick up the pace in 2003, starting with the release of Nokia's monumental 1100 model. On the surface it was a fairly basic mobile phone, offering little more than calls, texts, and other standard features such as an alarm clock and snake too. It also arrived at a time where smartphones with advanced features such as cameras, complex applications, and internet access were becoming more popular. So. You'd probably be s the iPhone 2007. As most of you will know, one of the main factors for Nokia's demise was the launch of Apple's iPhone. 
First launching in June 2007, priced from $499 for a two-year contract, Apple managed to sell over 6 million units. Whilst this wasn't the first touchscreen phone on the market, it came at a time when the mobile phone industry was predominantly made up of phones with physical keyboards, small screens and clunky designs. Apple BlackBerry Curve 8500 and 22009 BlackBerry launched its Curve 8520 model in 2009, further reinforcing its transformation from a business-focused to a consumer-focused manufacturer. Following the phone's release, BlackBerry sales Samsung Galaxy Note N7000 2011 Samsung launched its first Fabolt phone-slash-tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Note N7000, in October 2011. With a screen size of 5.3 inches, something that was pretty unheard of at this time, iPhone users ridiculed it as too big, asking questions like does it even fit in your pocket? Quite ironic when you see that Apple currently sells iPhones with a screen size of 6.5 inches. There's no doubt the first Galaxy Note had a huge impact on the future of mobile phones. Google Pixel 2016 Google launched its flagship phones, the Pixel and Pixel XL, to a great reception back in 2016. Whilst the model's design was nothing special, its high-quality hardware and software led to it receiving near 5-star reviews across the board. On top of this, the phone received a ton of good press surrounding its camera, scoring a rating of 89 on the DxO mark, the company that rates the quality of smartphone and DSLR cameras. This was the highest score ever awarded to a mobile phone at the time. Despite all this, iPhone X 2017. Apple yet again changed the game at its annual September conference with the launch of the iPhone X, the first iPhone with a full screen display. Launched to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the original iPhone, the model received a lot of bad press at first due to its staggering price tag, with prices starting from $999 for the 64GB model. Despite the heavy price tag, the iPhone X took the spot as Apple's top-selling phone each and every week for the first six months following its launch, helping Apple to generate a record $100 billion in revenue during this time. Its main features included the lack of any on-screen buttons, support for wireless charging, a 5.8-inch AMOLED display with True Tone, a dual 12-megapixel camera and Face ID.